when we talk about software development, we're really talking about a process that's comprised of a series of phases or stages. Activities in the various phases tend to vary depending on the development model used. Generally, phases are connected to milestones that define a project's progress as well as its stated goals. In this video, I'll discuss the phases for the Agile and Waterfall development models, I'll define activities in terms of software development, and I'll also explain external and internal milestones. So the terminology you'll use for different development phases really depends on the model. The Agile model works in terms of iterations. Agile methods usually subdivide individual tasks into simple increments. These increments require little planning and are usually broken into small, manageable time frames that could be as small as a couple of hours or they could extend out to a week or more. Agile iterations utilize cross-functional teams, the benefit being that these teams will tackle the entire scope of the task, things like requirements, coding, testing, and so on. When iterations are completed, the working results can be reviewed by project managers and other stakeholders. The point here is that these iterations, these steps in the process, aren't meant to deliver fully functional bug-free software. The goal is to have a working version with minimal bugs. Scrum methodology, on the other hand, deals in phases usually defined as sprints. Sprints can be thought of as predetermined time frames. They're small modules, if you will, of time that have a limited lifespan, typically somewhere between a week and a month. Unlike Agile, Scrum focuses on delivering a fully functional, bug-free product at the end of the time frame. The documentation is complete and the product can be shrink-wrapped. The waterfall method typically uses nomenclature like stage or version, but to keep it simple, I'll discuss it in terms of phases. Waterfall projects are sectioned off into a sequence of phases, each one needing to be completed before the subsequent phase can begin. So you can sort of think of it as a stage gate process. There usually isn't any overlap between phases, although it does happen and it's perfectly acceptable, assuming that it doesn't represent a flaw in the process or somehow endanger the successful delivery of a project. Like StageGate, the waterfall model delivers some sort of output at phase completion, and that output is the input for the subsequent phase. Generally, phases include activities, for example, user stories and tasks. Activities are significant deliverables. They have defined begin and end dates, as well as well-defined steps or tasks. And they include the capture of user stories that act as inputs for product requirements. It's not uncommon for activities to have interrelationships with other activities, and activities can often have, as part of their requirements, the successful completion of other activities. In software development, activities are usually defined in terms of entry and exit criteria. Entry criteria can include prior activities, linked tasks, other activities that require completion status, or other important inputs like establishment of available resources. Exit criteria can define things like verified deliverables and successful testing. Another important component of phases are testing milestones. Milestones are predefined events over the life expectancy of a project. They establish success criteria and provide the project team and other stakeholders with measurable goals. The major benefit of milestones is that they let everyone involved understand when a project is proceeding according to plan, when it's lagging, or when it's at risk of failing. We can intervene when a milestone is at risk, for example, if it hasn't been successfully delivered or if it's way off schedule. Milestones are typically used to track progress at the end of phases, and they may have no duration. Testing milestones can be internal or external. Internal milestones are typically appropriate for software currently in development, meaning it isn't ready for prime time yet. It's usable for internal testers. External milestones, on the other hand, is complete enough that it could be tested by external testers, perhaps a professional testing group or a beta program. In the external scenario, it's assumed that the software is complete enough that most or all of its intended features are working, but bugs or functional limitations are to be expected, which is why it's in testing. When it comes to software models, milestones typically align with calendar deadlines in waterfall models. In the Agile model, milestones relate to project progress. This means that the testing criteria that was established when the milestone was defined has to be satisfied. Criteria could be quality-related or functionality-related, but it has to be met before the milestone can be considered to be complete.